welcome to the Bullcast Podcast. I'm Katie Pickler, and with me is Court Winsett. Hello, Katie. And Cameron Spann. Hello, Katie and Court. Well, you may know that I sound a little bit different. I'm a little bit nasally. Uh, if you're in the Memphis area, you know that weather has been a little crazy. We've gone from 70 to 40 in the matter of like 10 hours. And back to 70 Back now. to 70 again. Yeah. And so my allergies are wrecking havoc on me, so I'm a little bit nasally and uh because of that, this is probably going to be me talking a little bit less. I know you're sad about that, but I'm going to let the boys talk a little bit more this episode. Oh, and we're going to talk, aren't we, Cameron? <laughs> we're going to talk. We're going to talk. <laughs> well, I figured since I was a little bit under the weather that why don't we talk about HSAs or health savings accounts? Healthcare, yes. It has become a, a like a pet topic of mine for some reason. I don't know why. I was never really all that interested in them. But then we were actually taking a class and it mm-hmm. came up in one of the classes we were taking. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is cool. I have not taken a class on this, so I'll be learning. <laughs> Learn from us. Well, before we get into that, um, I did want to do just a fun little banter about some of the healthcare movies and shows out there because. It seems like every day they come up with a new one. So basically our premise for the list is going to be movies and or TV shows that have doctors in them, right? Yeah, <laughs> something related. Doctors or hospitals. Healthcare related in some way. <laughs> I mean, the first one, Patch Adams. Patch Adams. Classic. Robin Williams. Robin Williams, great yeah. great movie. Red Clown Nose. Yes. Interestingly enough, though, if I was going to go with a Robin Williams healthcare movie, I would go with Awakenings. Do y'all remember that one? Don't it was really it was not a comedy. It was Robin Williams playing serious Robin Williams. Uh, it was with him and Robert De Niro. It was a really good movie. I think he might have actually even been nominated for a couple of acting awards for that one. That's one I have not seen, and I pride myself on being a Robin Williams fan. Oh, I'm, yeah. And then he was in the other one that, I mean, it's health-related, where he was growing faster. Do you remember that one? Yeah, that was called Jack. Jack, yeah. Uh, yeah. Where he just, like, his he was pituitary, gl- yeah. he aged faster, yeah. and... That was, it's such a tearjerker movie, though, at the end. So sad. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, this list would be a lot easier if we went with TV shows, which are just drowning, Bullshit. drowning in healthcare. I just keep thinking about ER and Grey's Anatomy. Oh, ER. It's George interesting. George Clooney. Young George Clooney. <laughs> yes. ER, obviously, um, it was real big when I was in, I guess it was while I was in college that it was, it was really, really big. There is an episode in particular of ER that I remember... Robin and I went over to my parents' house for dinner, and after dinner, we sat down and watched this episode of ER, and I just remember sitting there the entire time gripping the arm of the chair watching this episode. It was absolutely Mm -hmm. just, ah, it was so stressful. ER was a cultural phenomenon. Yeah, it was great. (laughs) You can't say that it was the first one because, I mean, yeah, we now have like Grays, and we have all these different shows out there that are healthcare related for all the different spectrums, and I mean... You've got them going on the fire route, the paramedic route, but MASH. You've got to go back to MASH. MASH was a a movie and a TV show, and it was a great movie. I think arguably an even better TV show than Mm -hmm. it was a movie. Of course, the biggest single series finale ever. The series finale episode of MASH is the most watched series finale episode of a TV show ever in the history of TV shows. I'm not making that up, guys. No. People forget that when ER was out, there was a, a competing hospital show that was... General was, Hospital? It was... No, that's a soap opera. Oh, uh, well, whatever. That's a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> there was a TV show called Chicago Hope that was on oh, at the same... It okay. came out, like, it was released the same, I think, the same year as ER. And you know, they were on different stations competing against each other. And I guess ER kind of won. But long before ER or... Chicago Hope. There was also St. Elsewhere. Do y'all recall that at all? I've heard of it. Nope. (laughs) There were a lot of actors on St. Elsewhere, including Denzel Washington. Mark Harmon was on St. Elsewhere. Howie Mandel was on St. Elsewhere. I mean, it had a lot of people on there. I feel like a lot of those hospital shows, there's a lot of actors that are like, oh yeah, what episode were you on ER? Or what were you on in, you know, Grey's? Everybody's been on one of these shows. I did want to throw another movie out there. I don't know if y'all remember the movie John Q. Yep. I don't. I don't remember this movie. This is when he pretty much holds the hospital hijack because insurance is not covering his son's transplant. That's Denzel, right? Denzel, yeah. yes. Oh. And it's it's a very powerful emotional movie, but it's showing the side of like needing health care and not having insurance and which is an interesting because I've started watching New Amsterdam. Mm-hmm. And I think it's on Netflix, and it's been along for a while, but I just found it. 
And it's all about a hospital and how they're trying to work with those that don't have insurance and just trying to make sure they're focused more on taking care of the people and not about all the you know money coming in with the hospital. Mm. Of course, you need money to run a hospital. Well, sure. I think healthcare slash hospital shows work better than movies is because there are so many different cases you can mm-hmm. cover. Kind of like legal shows like Boston Legal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, instead of a movie where you handle one person, one illness, you've got a swath that you can cover. Well, yeah. one one of my favorites from from when I was a child was was a show called Quincy. It was a hospital slash doctor show, but Quincy was a pathologist. He was a, a guy who. To examine dead bodies, um, <laughs> find cause of death, and so forth. And I remember looking forward to watching that show every single week. And I was young, too, watching a show about a doctor examining dead bodies when I was like six or seven years old. That's It explains weird. a lot. That's yeah. dark. <laughs> Okay, I do want to change our outline a little bit. Court, why don't you tell us what is an HSA plan before we tell people what they may be surprised about is covered on them? So a healthcare savings account, I think the most advantageous way uh, to use one is if if your employer offers one that you can actually have money withheld from your paycheck pre-tax, that money can go into an HSA and it can be invested, and it can grow, and you can use it. You can use the money that's in this account. You can withdraw it to pay your medical bills tax-free, so you never have to pay taxes on it. You you know, it's withheld, like I said, pre-tax, and then it grows tax-free, and you pull it out, and as long as you're using it for your medical expenses, you get to use it tax-free. If your employer does not offer HSA, uh, pre-tax withholding HSA, then you can still go to uh, banks or other financial institutions and start your own HSA and just fund it with post-tax money. And you still get that tax-free growth. And you can, again, you just use this money to cover whatever, for instance, so many of us now, high deductible insurance. If you have high deductible insurance, you can have an HSA and use that money to cover the, the, the parts of your health care that your insurance doesn't cover, including that deductible. So, you know, if you've got four or 5000 in your HSA and you've got a $3,000 deductible, then you can mm-hmm. use that HSA money to cover that deductible until you, until you finally cover the deductible and your insurance actually kicks in. And a lot of times it's kind of like a credit card that you've got. So, you know, like this is your medical credit card. Now, it doesn't cover everything, though. But uh, Nicole did put together a nice little list of over-the-counter items that you uh, probably didn't know were actually covered. Because I remember when I worked at a JDRF, we had HSA cards. And I remember looking at it and trying to figure out, okay, what's covered, what's not. Because you think, okay, your prescriptions you get from the pharmacy, yes. But then, you know, like Band-Aids, things like that. You can really look at it. It's like... That's health related. So instead of you going and purchasing it at Target or wherever, like, you know, put it on your HSA card, go to Walgreens, do that. But this list, we'll kind of round robin it. 23andMe DNA test can be covered by this. It's all the rage. It's so big right now. I've got a friend who has found some very big news out from doing one of these DNA tests. Really? Yeah. I'm I'm intrigued. She has found her long lost father. She she didn't know. Really? Yeah. Wow. Pretty big deal. Interesting. Okay. Another thing that you may not have thought of is the deep muscle massage. Guns. 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 (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Don't forget the guns. You don't get a massage therapist through this. No. The deep muscle massage guns. So you can actually go out and get one of those hammer things that that basically like, I mean, those things look abusive. (laughs) They hurt. They hurt for sure. Next on the list, Super Goop sunscreen. If you're like me, uh, here's a little explainer. It's a nice brand of sunscreen sold at Sephora. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. I'm guessing all sunscreen is covered, and that's just like a bougie one. Yeah, it's very specific. Very, very specific. Super Goop. Okay, ladies, uh, your products that you need for your time of the month is covered. Tampons, Midol, pads, all of that. I mean, like, duh, that should be, right? I mean, you sure, would think, yeah, I absolutely. would think that needs to be covered. Yeah. Uh, what about a face ice roller? That shocks me because that's more of a beauty thing. Yeah, it is. Abby has one that sits in our freezer. Hmm. Yeah, it's much okay. more of a beauty thing, so that shocks me that that's a health thing. Well, I mean, I guess you could also <clears throat> use it for health purposes. Like, you know, it would keep swelling down if you got punched in the face, probably, or something. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm spitballing here, guys. Come on. You went cold, I'll go hot. Heating pads are covered. Makes sense. Acne products such as hero patches and cleansers. I don't know what hero patches are. I don't either. I've never heard of them. And I have acne. 
<laughs> okay. Breastfeeding necessities like um nipple cream. <laughs> I wonder if pumps are covered. Yeah, well, I mean, I was, I was, I immediately went to a pump. I wonder if you can. I just hosted a baby shower yesterday, so that's why I'm like all the random like stuff that people get because it's like, oh, here's some chapstick. That's not chapstick. Oh, yeah, nipple cream, nipple shields. You get chapped. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, And last on the list is pregnancy and fertility tests, which makes sense. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. I wonder if condoms are covered when you're covering full circle of this all. Throw the prophylactics in. Yeah. Okay, so as I mentioned before, uh, healthcare savings account, there are certain things you have to have to be qualified to have an HSA. First of all, do you have a qualified high deductible health plan? Second, do you have no other health coverage? Third, are you not enrolled in Medicare? And finally, you cannot be claimed as a dependent on someone else's tax return. If you have those four qualifications, then you qualify to have a healthcare savings account. Is it worth it to have an HSA? I say yes. Yeah. I'm a big proponent for healthcare savings accounts. Um, it can be worth it for the tax advantages alone, obviously. Um, the money that you contribute to an HSA is tax free, like I said. Uh, So you lower your tax bill by having some money that comes out of your paycheck pre-tax, just like your pre-tax deductions for your actual health insurance, your pre-tax deduction for your 401k. This is another pre-tax deduction that you can take out. Uh, Obviously, that's an advantage. Also, with your HSA, you can choose the investments. You can choose what your what your money is invested in, kind of like you you know you do with your four hundred one k plan. Yeah, I remember um, with mine, it's you just had to have a certain limit. Like I think they wanted you to have at least a thousand dollars in there before you could choose investments. Other than that, it would just kind of sit in cash. But all of them are a little bit unique. But yeah, you've got the control and. And you can put money in there and you don't have to use it. So it's one of those, if you're young and healthy and you don't want to just blow it all on band-aids and ice roller things, and you could hold on to it because you know, like maybe one day you may have more medical expenses come up. I know we didn't list it, but you can use your healthcare savings account for dentistry as well mm-hmm. and for vision. So if you don't have a dental oh, plan yeah, or we- a vision plan, then you can use it for that as well. That's a great segue. You want me to talk about what HSA funds can be used for? Sure. Deductibles. So, like when you go to the doctor and they're like, yo, this much, yeah. out of pocket. Yep. Um, dental services that you just covered, mm-hmm. vision care, mm-hmm. prescription drugs, yep. mm-hmm. co pays, psychiatric treatments, that's interesting, and other qualified medical expenses not covered by health insurance plan. So, the big thing is with most of these plans, as Katie mentioned, usually the, the plans nowadays have a credit card that's basically, it's not a credit card, it, it's technically it's a debit, debit card. Yeah. Um, that is linked to your HSA, and you can actually use it to pay for medical expenses. But if for some reason your plan doesn't have that, then the other way that you can use your HSA is basically you go to the doctor, you go wherever, you pay for whatever medical item or service it is that you're that you need, and then you take that receipt, you submit it to your HSA, and they will send you the money to cover that expense. But like I said, and like Katie said, most of them nowadays have a, uh, a debit card that you can use that just taps directly into your HSA. Advantages of HSAs. Many expenses qualify. We've kind of talked about that. Eligible expenses, including a wide range of medical, dental, and mental health services. And as we talked about before, over-the-counter medicines and menstrual products are now qualified. Love how it says now qualified. Like, this is a new thing. Like, really? We could do. We could. <laughs> We're not going to get on that political yeah. route right now. <laughs> um, but I, I was shocked when I got mine and I went through what is covered and what's not. And it's, you know, it would be very strange. Like, some, like, laser hair removal was covered in some things, which is crazy. That is crazy. But then it's, like, some other things that should make sense weren't covered. Is a Brazilian covered? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Others can contribute. Yeah. Contributions so, can come from you, your employer, a relative, or anyone else who wants to add to your HSA. Yeah. Anybody can put money in there. And again, this we is... We can all put money in our own, each other's. That's <laughs> nice. Sure. <laughs> Merry I'll, Christmas. I'll contribute to your HSA. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Exactly. It's like you tell people to put money in kids' 529 plans. It's like, for my birthday, will you contribute to my HSA? It's the most adult thing ever. <laughs> Earlier, I mentioned um, that you can do it pre-tax, but I also said, you know, some some people, their employer doesn't offer it. You can go and you can set up your own HSA somewhere. And if you're using after-tax money to make contributions to your HSA, you can deduct those contributions from your gross income on your tax return. So even if you can't have a pre-tax deduction through your employer, those post-tax contributions to your HSA, you can deduct them on your tax return. 
And speaking of tax, another advantage is tax-free withdrawals, which we've already mentioned. Mm-hmm. Withdrawals from your HSA are not subject to federal and, in most cases, state taxes if you use them for qualified medical expenses. Yep. And all of that growth, again, is tax-free. So any earnings, any interest on, the, on your HSA that you get is also tax-free. I like this advantage, annual rollover. If you have money left in your HSA at the end of the year, it will actually roll over to the next year. You don't lose it. That's fantastic. It kind of blows my mind that that wouldn't be the yeah. case, though. Well, there, I mean, are, it's uh, my money. I, you know, if I put it in there, of course, I, I better be able to keep it. But you remember from our class, there are certain health care plans that you use it or lose it. Make sure you are looking at this as an HSA. Anything, when a company offers you some kind of health care plan, Read the fine print, figure it out before you just go, oh, I'm young and I don't need this or, oh, I don't know what this is. If you've got an HSA, it's a good thing. Because like I said, I was contributing all that time at JDRF. I never really used it. When I left, I was like, well, surely it's going to stay with them. No, it was my money. I got to keep it and... Mm use it for another couple of years after I left there. Yeah, so it's not not just that you can roll it over from year to year, but it also is portable. You can yeah. take it with you wherever you go. If you leave one employer and go to another and your HSA was through one employer, you can take that HSA with you. Similar to like 401k money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's yours. It's my money and I'm going to take it with me. Okay, and yeah, we've talked about it's convenient because they've now come out with like the debit cards. So some disadvantages of HSAs. <laughs> okay, so obviously first, like I said earlier, there are there are some requirements to be able to to participate with an HSA and that number one requirement is you have to be in a high deductible healthcare plan. So you're required to qualify to be in an HSA and that high deductible, I mean, if you had the option between having a high deductible uh, health insurance or a, a low or no deductible health insurance, I'm not suggesting that you go out and get the high deductible just so you can have an HSA. I mean, I, I would yeah. prefer to have mm-hmm. no deductible or low deductible health care plan. But if you do have a high deductible health care plan, then obviously the HSA is an option for you. This is an interesting one. Pressure to save. So the stat says some people may be reluctant to seek health care when they need it because they don't want to spend their money in their HSA accounts. Interesting. Mm. Talk it out, Katie. I don't know. That's tell me what you think. Pressure to save, like I, I think that goes like with our logic of you're putting money in different buckets. Like that's your money that's dedicated for healthcare. So it's you shouldn't feel pressure when you need to go to the doctor or need to get something. It's like no, I already have a bucket of money that's set for that purpose. It's not like you're taking from your Disney fund. Yeah, like you've got it set. It's this isn't your vacation fund. This isn't your kids' retirement or your your retirement and your kids' education fund. This is your health fund. Mm-hmm. So it's honestly, I think it's great if employers encourage kids to do this. Sure. Kids and people, <laughs> whoever's working there, child labor, you know. Now, another disadvantage that we do need to talk about is if you haven't picked up on it, this is a health care savings plan. So uh, you have to use the money for health care expenses. Mm-hmm. If you use it for non-health care expenses, uh, if you're under the age of 65 and you withdraw money to use on something other than health care, you will pay taxes on that money and you will pay a penalty on that money. If you're over 65, they don't they don't penalize you for withdrawing and using it for something other than health care expenses, but you will pay taxes on it. So the only way that you can use this money tax free is if it is used for your health care expenses. Yeah. So remember, this money is put aside for health care. So don't look at it as, oh, I got credit card debt or oh, I need to buy a new car. Health care. Another disadvantage is record keeping. So you have to keep receipts to prove that your withdrawals were used for the qualified health expenses. And this is in case you get audited by the fabulous IRS. Can confirm. Okay, so uh, Bobby and I used to have a uh, an HSA through her old employer. And um, we had one of those great debit cards and we used it to pay a dental expense and we did not have a receipt from the dentist and the HSA actually cut us off and said we couldn't use the card anymore unless we could show proof, show them proof that we had used the card for a dental expense. We never could get the receipt from the dentist to, to get our card reactivated. So we just, we had to start. You were in HSA jail. Yeah. The only way we could use our HSA was to submit receipts and get reimbursed um, because they wouldn't reactivate our card. It was really kind of annoying. So make sure you have uh, extra room in your file cabinet for all these receipts. Well, I would think that in this day and age, they'd come up with something. If they've got this debit card, that it'll almost be an app that it could be like you made this charge. 
Now take a picture with your phone of the receipt and log it. So when they see the transactions, you know, like on your check register, mm-hmm. you can like pull up your check and see. If they don't do that, do that HSA people. Like mm-hmm. I have an idea, do it. <laughs> and then finally, of course, last disadvantage, there there may be fees related to your HSA account, the use of your HSA account. You know, it varies from company to company. So make sure you're familiar with what fees you're charged for either purchase by purchase or, you know, is it an annual fee? What, what, you know, what's going on with that? What are they charging you basically? So the main benefits of these, having a self health savings account alleviates some of the stress of unexpected and unpredictable medical expenses. Better yet, the money you save in this account is tax free. So again, it, it goes with everything we talk about with financial planning that you put money in different buckets. Yes, this money is then going to be tied up as it's related to only health things. But unfortunately, health is going to happen. Like Mm -hmm. you're going to have something in your life, whether it's you or a spouse or a child, somebody is going to have a time where they're going to need health dollars. And as you see, even if you're fortunate and you don't have to have anything major, it can be used on basic day-to-day things that you are going to need, you know, Advil, me, cold meds, you yeah. know, things like that. Um, Boy, I go through some Advil, <laughs> <yeah>. man. <laughs> Heating pads. I mean, I think between the three of us, we've all hurt our back like in the past eight months. Yeah. <laughs> because we're old. Um, (laughs) But it's just, it's a good financial discipline because you sign up for this, you're putting money aside. I've had a lot of young people lately come to me and their companies offer this. And when they're looking at their paycheck, they're going, well, I want the most possible to come home to me. And so you're telling me I need to put money in retirement and you're telling me I need to put money in health. So I know that's a struggle to think about that, but if it's possible, you need to do both. You really need to take advantage of retirement, take advantage of this health, and then try and just set that discipline because you're going to thank yourself down the road that you did save health dollars. And of course, obviously, if there's an upside to an HSA, then there's obviously also a downside. And again, that downside would just be the fact that to even qualify to have an HSA, you have to have a high deductible health care plan. And um, that's a kind of a pain, but look at it this way. As Katie was talking about having your money in separate buckets and the the need to save, just at an absolute minimum, if you have a high deductible health care plan, then get an HSA and put away at least enough money to cover that deductible. And that way you've always got you've you've got your deductible covered. So if you have some sort of surprise medical expense and you've got to cover that deductible, then you've got that money in your HSA. If you want to put away more money than just your deductible, great. But at an absolute minimum, have that high deductible covered by the money that's in your HSA. Mm -hmm. And for our young listeners, deductible is a fancy word, which basically just means what you pay out of pocket, that cash before insurance actually kicks in their Mm -hmm. part. Yep. I mean, HSAs are great. I feel like we've kind of talked about the pros and cons. There's not a ton we can go into even further because they're constantly evolving what they're adding to the list of what they cover, what they may take off that they're not going to cover. So it is something that if you do have a plan, make sure you're constantly looking at what's covered, what's not, because what may apply to you today may not be what you actually are going to need in a couple of years. So just kind of refresh yourself on those things. Most of them have websites that you can just do a quick search. So you're not having to read through 30 pages of details, but HSAs are good if you can get one and it forces you to kind of put money aside for yourself, which you are your most important investment. You have to take care of your body. You have to take care of you because if you don't do that, then what are you working for and saving all this money in retirement for then? Like, yeah. What is it all for? What is it all for then? (laughs) Oh, would Katie, would you call that a bullseye? I mean, probably. (laughs) You're not always bullseye before the bullseye. Yes, you are definitely a pre bullseye. -er. (laughs) (laughs) This is a short episode anyway, but I do feel like I I don't know why I'm so high on HSAs right now, but I think they're a great thing. I think it's a good thing to have if you do have that high deductible health insurance. Thank goodness you have health insurance, but if it's a high deductible health insurance, then definitely get yourself an HSA. Put away at least enough money to cover that high deductible, and then, you know, you you aren't disadvantaged anymore by by having to have that high deductible. Uh, It's a great thing. 
Presto! Ladies and gentlemen, there's the closing bell. You've made it to the end of yet another episode of the Bullcast Podcast. If you liked what you heard and you'd like to hear more, please feel free to go to your favorite subscription service and sign up to have our podcast beam directly to your favorite listening device every single Thursday at noon. If you'd like to find out more about me, Katie, or Cameron, you can go to our website. That's bullcastpodcast.com. Read our bios, look at some pictures. You can leave a comment, suggest a topic if you have a topic you'd like to hear us cover, or if you would like to suggest a guest, we also frequently have guests on our podcast and we would love to hear your suggestions there. If you like pictures, I mentioned pictures before, we have all the pictures on Instagram. Our Instagram handle is at Bullcast Podcast, and we also have all of the words on the Twitters. Our Twitter handle is at Bullcast Podcast as well. We also have a Facebook page. That Facebook page is... I think the Bullcast podcast. Yes. And uh, finally, I don't know if we mentioned it today, but Katie, Cameron, and I all work at a place called Pickler Wealth Advisors. And if you'd like to find out more about what we do at Pickler Wealth Advisors, find out about our amazing team and our boss, David Pickler, go to that website. The website address is picklerwealthadvisors.com. That's advisors with an O. Not an E. Ladies and gentlemen, we've given you plenty to be going on with. So for now, I'm Court. I'm Katie. I'm Cam. And we're done. <laughs>